So let's start off with the basics for needle felting. So needle felting uses something called wool roving, which are kind of fibres that are kind of raw fibres straight from the, the sheep. They have been processed and dyed, but what you'll find is they're, they're quite kind of, they can be quite rough. So what you'll do is when you needle felt is if you're doing just a straightforward flat piece, you'll take your needle. Now the needle is pretty specialist and it's got these little barbs on it. Can you see those little kind of sharp points that are on it? What that does is it takes the fibres from here and kind of pushes them and interlocks them into each other and creates a solid piece of fabric from it. So it's really simple and straightforward. You're literally just going to stab and you can see as I start stabbing there how much this flattens out. Obviously keep your fingers well out of the way because it is a sharp little needle that you're going to be working with. And then every so often you're going to need to take that off because some of the fibres do go into the sponge itself and flip it over and start again. This one's a, I wouldn't go too hard with this. I was going to say it's a great one to get your aggression out but actually you probably only want to be stabbing if I just show you the edge, about halfway through that sponge. You don't need to be going all the way through. It's, there doesn't need to be any great pressure on this. It is a more delicate process and it's literally just starting to knit those fibres together. And what you'll find is sometimes that's getting quite thin now, so I'll double that over and then go back at it again and just keep going, keep going, keep going until you get that solid piece of fabric. And by solid, I mean something that you would be able to either cut out or create a, a shape from. So this is the way that you'll make most of your pieces and just keep flipping it and going back at it and flipping it and going back at it. And it will start to kind of firm up and create those shapes. Once you've got a piece that's firm enough, and I'll keep going and I'll get this one done so you can see that it really doesn't take too long at all to do. Let's just keep flipping it because when you uh, push the fibres into that foam base, what you'll find is they, a few of the fibres actually make it through into the foam itself. That's great because it stops things kind of moving around, but it also means that you do have to keep flipping it over and putting things back together. So you've got two projects within the kit. I'm just showing you here with the white, and um, I'm kind of aiming for an ear shape for the rabbit template that I've got here, because that's, you'll make them all the same way, no matter of whether it's rabbit or cat, these kind of basics will work the, exactly the same way. And can you see how it's now starting to take that kind of ear shape? And all I'm doing is just tweaking it, tucking it under, folding it a little bit more, getting some of those loose bits back in, and felting, felting, felting away. And now we'll have a look at the other side. And take that, just tuck that in a little bit. And you just keep going, mind your fingers, obviously, because it is a sharp needle that you're working with. And don't be too rough either, because the needles are quite thin and can snap if you're a little bit too giddy with them. So I would probably go a little bit more on that, but now you can see it's kind of, it's more like a piece of felt that you would buy in a shop rather than just lots of fibres. And then from here, if you need to adjust any of your shapes, you can just grab a pair of scissors and we'll trim this one round. So say, for example, this one, we're gonna, we're gonna cut out uh, an ear shape. I mean, it's pretty close to where we need to be, but maybe we just need to create a bit more shape around the bottom. So we'll just trim a little bit of that away to create a closer shape to what's on the template there. Back in just to tidy any little bits and pieces up. And then that's kind of your basics for just your flat needle felted shapes. Now they're made from a combination of flat shapes like the one we've just made, rounded shapes and working into polystyrene. So flat shapes, really simple, create a flat piece trim it a little bit to create its shape and then away you go. Now if you're working on a more rounded piece, so let's say for example the tail on the cat, that's a nice rounded shape, we're going to take our fibre and just kind of roll it into more of a sausage shape before we start. And that will give you a little head start on your felting, it won't take you quite as long to, to put it together. And then we're going to stab away into that. and keep just rolling it over and stabbing it in. 
and then once you get to the edge of your foam block you can take it out and then start it all over again and again just keep working it rolling it working it get rolling it and getting all of those loose fibers in there and you'd want to uh, stab directly up and down you don't want to be kind of avoiding going at angles and things like that because that's when you risk snapping your needle and we'll just fold that back over a little bit more you can see it's getting much more dense now and I'm also leaving one end that's a little bit fluffy now any of the pieces that you need to attach onto that main body it's definitely worth leaving a little fluffy end on because that will attach to the body part much more easily than a, a really solid piece like the tip of the tail that I'm creating here and you're just going to keep stabbing away and rolling and stabbing and rolling until you create that sausage shape okay so this is almost ready and you can see I've created a really solid shape there with this soft piece on the end and that is for something like the tail that I've got here this soft piece you would attach to the base there and I've got a cat with two tails look um, and you'd stab it in and having that kind of softer more open weave piece there that will help you get those fibers knitted in with the rest of the cat so sausages really important shape they will help you create things like legs and things like tails the last thing I need to show you on the basics is actually working into polystyrene so if I take uh, this little guy here and we'll take some white again because I know that the egg is the shape for the rabbit so I'm going to take a little bit of that off and start wrapping that around and don't try and go for it all at once you'll never get it all in one hit so just start pushing those fibers in now when we were working onto the foam we had to keep taking it off and moving it this is not the case when you're working into polystyrene because I want those fibers to go into the polystyrene and I want them to stay in there and form a really nice solid bond with it so I'm going to keep moving it around and doing the next bit moving it around and doing the next bit and then if I have any bald patches then I can just take a few extra little fibers say for example there look you can still see the polystyrene through a little bit I'll pop that on there and then add in some of those extra fibers just to fill in any bald spots now this does take a little while but it is worth the result because by using those polystyrene balls as a base for your design what you'll end up with is the kind of correct ratio of shapes for head to body and that will give you a much better kind of finished result so this does take a little time there's there's kind of no quick way out of it you do just have to spend the time and make sure that that fiber is stabbed into the polystyrene and it will start to kind of get really firm against the polystyrene ball and create a beautiful shape which will be your foundation for either your cat or your rabbit project so they're kind of three of the basic steps that we need to take you through and um, once you've got those underway then we can start looking at the finer details for both the cat and the rabbit.